And next, we would like to invite Mr. Van Schaffner from the U.S. motion pictures industry to make a presentation on the AI and copyright in motion industry. The Motion Picture Association, and I'm glad to be here today. I want to thank the Korea Copyright Commission uh, for the opportunity to speak with you about artificial intelligence, copyright, and the motion picture industry. I know it's a, a artificial intelligence is obviously um, an area of great interest today um, in, over the last year uh, since the introduction of popular, uh, easy to use AI tools uh, like ChatGPT, Stable Diffusion, WALL-E, and many others. So before I get into the substance, let me just tell you a little bit about who I am and what, uh, what the Motion Picture Association is. We are a trade association in the United States uh, comprised of the six major motion picture and television studios um, in the world. That's Disney, Netflix, Paramount, Sony Pictures, Universal Studios, and Warner Brothers Discovery. Uh, the Motion Picture Association was founded over 100 years ago. We just celebrated our uh, 100th uh, anniversary in 2022. Uh, we were founded in 1922. Uh, our membership has changed a little bit um, over the last uh, century, uh, but essentially many of these companies have been with us uh, for uh, since the very beginning, over one, over a century. Um, so uh, I'd like to emphasize something at the beginning. That's that for more than a century, advances in technology have played an important part in enhancing the creation, production, development, and distribution of compelling audiovisual content. These developments have often been controversial at the time, but they've almost always ended up benefiting both creators and audiences. MPA's members see great promise in artificial intelligence. While humans are and will remain at the heart of the creative process, we believe AI will be a powerful tool that can enhance the filmmaking process as well as the audience's viewing experience and fan engagement. Of course, our members support a robust copyright system that incentivizes the creation of movies, television programs, and other art forms. Copyright is the foundation of the entire motion picture and television ecosystem, and infringers are not exempt from copyright law just because they use new technologies, AI included. AI raises many interesting questions for copyright law. Many of those questions implicate areas of law that are well-developed. There is not a reason yet to believe that existing doctrines cannot provide workable answers to those questions. What is most important is that courts and policymakers approach these questions in a thoughtful and careful manner and not jump to early definitive conclusions based on limited experience with this technology. All right, so let's get a little bit more into the substance of how the motion picture industry uh, approaches AI, how they're using AI, and what we see as some of the major legal questions, the major copyright questions uh, that AI uh, presents. So as I mentioned in my introductory remarks, technological change in our industry is a constant. And that goes back to the very beginnings of our industry. So you may remember that, that in the very early, early part of the last century, uh, movies were silent. Um, uh, the actors couldn't actually, you couldn't hear what the actors were saying. Um, and if there was music, it was gonna be played by a live orchestra in the movie theater. Um, that of course changed in the late 1920s with the advent of talkies. Um, there was a big backlash to that, both by actors who thought they may not have the right skills to be in talking movies, and by musicians who actually organized something in the United States called the Music Defense League to fight back against the idea of having recorded music in movies. Well, we all know that, that, that music and dialogue is now, of course, a routine part of, uh, of, of the movie going experience. It has been for over a century, and I don't think anybody would argue now for going back. Same with television. When television 
uh, was introduced in the late 40s and, and became popularized in the early 50s. People thought, oh my gosh, this will be the death of the motion picture industry. People will only want to sit home and watch TV instead of going to the movie theater. That, of course, proved not to be true. Uh, and they both uh, coexist and thrive to this day. Same with cable television, same with the VCR, and with the internet. All of these things were controversial at times, and I don't want to I don't want to imply that there were never bumps along the road. Uh, but uh, the consumers and the industry have always been adaptable, and again, eventually these things working at, usually work out quite well for everybody involved. So I think that's some important background as we think about the changes that may be wrought by artificial intelligence. Again, we at the motion picture industry, in the motion picture industry, see great promise in AI. We think it'll work out to be a good thing for the industry, for creators, for audiences. That doesn't mean it'll always be easy. Um, but one thing that's important to keep in mind is that even with these amazing technological developments, humans will always remain at the heart of the filmmaking process. And again, as we think through some of the challenges to copyright law that come about have come about because of artificial intelligence, the overriding principle that we want to keep in mind is that there should be no AI exception to copyright law. All right. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about how the movie studios are actually using AI uh, uh, so far. As I mentioned in my introductory remarks, humans are and always will remain at the heart of the creative process that results in a movie or television program. We view AI as a tool that will enhance human creativity, not replace it. AI tools can actually free creators from some of the tedious and repetitive tasks that they have had to perform in the past and free them up to concentrate on the most creative aspects of their work. And AI will also help creators realize their vision to further enhance the viewer experience, making visual effects more dramatic, more realistic, and more enjoyable for the audience. It will even enable experiences that haven't previously been possible. Imagine, for example, a feature where a fan can interact and even have a real-time conversation with a favorite fictional character. That's the kind of thing that AI may make possible, and I'm sure there are many future use cases that we can't even dream of today. As I mentioned, creative professionals at our member studios and many innovative companies with which they work are already incorporating AI into the production and post-production process. AI can greatly improve processes that used to be done manually. For example, for many decades, animators and visual effects artists used a process called rotoscoping, which involves manually altering each frame in a film. It's incredibly detail-oriented, time-consuming work. But modern visual effects artists, again, still humans, now have sophisticated tools at their disposal to automate this type of work, some of which incorporate AI technology. This type of AI enhanced technology can be used to perform all sorts of important tasks that are necessary to present a visually compelling experience for audiences. Some is fairly routine post-production work like color correction, detail sharpening, de-blurring, or removing unwanted objects. Some is more involved, like aging or de-aging an actor, or adjusting the placement of computer-generated images to make sure everything flows smoothly and aligns properly. And those are just some of the, use the uses that I can talk about today. But as we all know, the AI developments are coming at us fast and furious, and our members are eager to explore the ways that they can be used to support creators, enhance creativity, and make movies and television shows even more enjoyable for audiences. All right, I'm next to, going, to going to turn to, uh, to briefly discuss some of the issues that uh, artificial intelligence, and especially the most recent uh, developments over the last year, 
have raised for copyright law. This is obviously a big and uh, important question, actually many sub questions. So I'm only gonna be able to skim the surface, but I thought I should at least identify some of the major issues that we are confronting. I should also emphasize that I am talking from the perspective of a lawyer in the United States who is most familiar with, of course, United States copyright law, which obviously is not the same as uh, copyright law in other countries, including Korea. So I ask for your indulgence uh, to be a little bit US centric here. And I realize, of course, that some of the basic principles of United States copyright law, like the fair use doctrine, is not something that uh, exists in most other parts of the world. That said, let me just, uh, again, identify some of the major issues that we are confronting here in the United States um, and, uh, and that uh, countries all over the world are confronting um, through their own, uh, through the lens of their own uh, specific laws. Again, the overriding uh, principle on which we think that analysis of copyright law in the AI context uh, should be uh, should be seen is that there is no AI exception to copyright law. Instead, we should exit. We should apply well-established principles of copyright law to these new technological developments, just like copyright lawyers have been doing for well over a century. So here are some of the big copyright, uh, some of the big legal questions that were cop that were confronting. Um, with all of these new developments in copyright law. And there's four of them that I'm going to identify. The first, is material created with AI protected by copyright? And we are just starting to see the United States Copyright Office and courts here in the United States confront this issue. And I will tell you that um, they have answered sort of some of the most basic questions, but there's still a lot of more complicated questions that are going to be uh, takes probably several years to resolve. And the basic question is, if you have material that is entirely solely generated by AI, the consensus here in the United States appears to be that that material would not be protected by copyright. Um, so if you just, for example, enter a simple prompt into a system like ChatGPT or Stable Diffusion, say, draw a picture of a scene in the forest, um, and the output from that would not be correct, protected by copyright law. But there's still a lot of questions about, well, what if there is more human creativity than just that simple prompt that you would enter into the system? For example, the US Copyright Office has confronted several cases where individuals have tried to register copyrights, where it's not just one simple prompt, but several hundred uh, prompts uh, in an iterative process that finally result in the, the final output. What the US Copyright Office has said so far is that even if you have several hundred prompts uh, even, uh, into one of these AI systems, that the output is still not copyrightable. That I would say is a very controversial decision, um, and we will. It'll probably take a number of uh, fights in the courts uh, before that question is definitively resolved. Um, again, it's the the question is not so much is material created with AI protected by copyright, but how much cre how much human creativity is necessary as part of the process um, for it to result in something that actually is protected by copyright. And drawing that line will be no, uh, no easy matter. Second question I want to talk about for a minute is uh, a big one that, that copyright lawyers all over the world are confronting. That's, is it copyright infringement to train an AI system on copyrighted works? As most of you in the audience probably know, um, most of these generative AI systems uh, learn from the ingestion, that is the copying, of large volumes of copyrighted works. Uh, that could be text, it could be images, potentially it could even be audiovisual works like motion pictures or uh, television programs. So uh, let's assume for a moment uh, 
as, as seems likely, that these systems are making a copy um, into their systems uh, uh, in order to, to learn from them, to train the AI model. The question then becomes, is that copying excused by some sort of defense? Here in the United States, we would evaluate that under the fair use doctrine. This is, of course, a very important, fair use is a very important part of copyright law. It says that, uh, that even if something is technically copying, it does not qualify as copyright infringement if it performs some socially beneficial use. And the courts apply a very fact-specific uh, form of analysis where they look at four different factors and determine uh, whether the use is actually infringing. Um, most important of those factors is, does the copying serve the same purpose as the plaintiff's works? And, and also, uh, does this particular use harm the market for the plaintiff's works? Um, again, the court needs to look at the very specific facts in each individual case. So this debate uh, here in the United States, and I know around the world, has become very polarized. There are some that say it is copyright infringement, end of story. There are some that say it's not copyright infringement, it's fair use, end of story. Um, we in the motion picture industry don't think the answer is quite so clear. We don't think you can say it's always infringement or it's always fair use. Again, what the courts have told us for a very long time in the fair use context is that you have to look at the individual facts of the case. You have to look and see whether the copying and perhaps the individual, the actual uh, eventual output uh, serves the same purpose as the works on the input side. You have to look and see whether the output is causing harm to the market for the copyrighted works owned by the plaintiff. Um, and the answer may be different depending on the different AI system and the different uses to which it is being put. And I don't think we're going to have clear answers here in the United States, probably for several years. Number three, who, if anybody, is responsible when an AI system produces infringing output? This is a hard and complicated question because it's not simply one person or one entity performing all the acts that could be potentially responsible. So you remember the way that these AI systems work. They have to be trained on copyrighted works. That creates a model and somebody has to be somebody has to create the model. That model then needs to be put in a consumer friendly form like ChatGPT or Stable Diffusion. Excuse me. And then ultimately a user has to put in the prompt. Any one of those four entities, and there could be even more depending on the specifics of the system, could potentially be liable. They could also be, they could also potentially argue, well, I, I'm not responsible because I only performed this one sort of narrow task and I can't be responsible for what somebody else may have done with this system. Um, we have longstanding and complicated doctrines to sort out this kind of issue that have been applied to many technologies in the past. We think at this point, again, that these various factual scenarios presented by AI can be handled by these existing laws, but I don't want to pretend that it'll be simple. And again, it'll probably take several years before these issues are sorted out. And then the last issue I wanna raise is transparency or disclosure obligations. And here I'm talking about both on the input side, should an AI system be obligated to disclose uh, all of the works uh, on which it is trained, either a list of specific works or perhaps by category. And then same thing on the output side. If you are using an AI system to create new works, should you be obligated to disclose that fact? Uh, these are issues that are being debated here in the United States, in Europe. I'm sure they soon will be all around the world. 
So in my short time, I've only been able to really identify uh, some of the major issues and not actually provide uh, definitive questions. Uh, but these are certainly things that, that we in the motion picture industry and in all of the creative industries uh, will be watching and participating in um, in the years to come. Again, I want to thank the Korea Copyright Commission uh, for the opportunity to speak with you today. Thank you.